Let's knock them out cold, my friends. This is Nova Alexandrivka. This settlement is firmly under Ukrainian control right now and it's on the right bank of Dnepro River. We have this video of a Ukrainian tank column pushing forward to the Russian positions in that settlement with a Ukrainian T-64 in the lead. It engages a Russian tank destroying it. I want to point out the distance between tanks in this column. This is the right distance. You couldn't almost call this a column. They're supposed to have these huge distances to minimize enemy artillery efficiency. You all remember the clips of Russian tanks bumper to bumper, 30 to 40 tanks all cramped together and Ukrainian artillery raining down on them, destroying every last one of them. This here is Rubishna and this here is Kremina. These two settlements are on the Russian occupation, but as you can see, the front line is very close. We're talking about seven kilometers making this road connect these two settlements very vulnerable to Ukrainian artillery. Russian sources today claim that Ukrainians hit their column on this road on their way from Kremina to Rubishna. A lot of vehicles destroyed and many Russian casualties. This might be the front line but HIMARS reach is something like that. So all of this area here, all of this area here it could be under HIMARS influence and this terrifies the Russians. In the northern front it has been raining for a few days and there's huge fields of mud here. Ukrainian advance has been stopped due to these conditions because like Russians at the beginning months of the invasions, Ukrainians also get stuck in the mud. They don't want to lose their armor. But the weather forecast now promises a dry period, so we'll be looking out for Ukrainian advances in the north. This here is Svatove, the most important settlement before advancing deeper into the Russian-held areas. Ukrainians want to avoid urban warfare, so what they might do is cut from the north of it and cut from the south of it, connecting and try to surround this settlement. If Russians retreat before they're surrounded, they probably will retreat into the next big settlement, which is Starobilsk. But without taking Svatove or making the Russians retreat, from this settlement, Ukrainians cannot penetrate deeper into this area. So if the dry period starts, look out for the maneuvers around Svatovia. As much as we know from the Russian sources, there's supposed to be about 5,000 Russian troops in Svatovia. So for now, this settlement is well protected. Today, my friends, we have a sponsor. When I do research about these videos, I sometimes have to visit sketchy sites that are definitely trying to steal my data or IP. This is why I use Atlas VPN. It is dead simple to use and it works perfect. Just open the VPN, select a server and connect. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. It means that you can get a three-year subscription with only $1.99 per month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Time is running out, so click the link in the video description below. This is the best VPN deal on the market. Keep your Google searches in private. With Atlas VPN, you can search the web with real and organic search results and do it without anyone tracking your activity. This is hugely important when visiting lesser known sites or foreign sites like I do when researching these videos. Stop ads and malware. Atlas VPN is more than just a VPN. It blocks all the malicious links, ads and trackers and notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data. Protect unlimited devices. Yes, Atlas VPN protects all your devices with just one subscription. You can get a three-year subscription with only $1.99 per month with 30-day money-back guarantee. Time is running out, so get your deal by clicking the link in the description below. What about the south, the right bank of the Dnepro River? Right now, the most trained and elite Russian forces, the designed forces, are on the right bank of the Dnepro River. If Russia loses these forces, they lose their last professional trained troops. The rest of the troops around all the fronts have volunteered in the past eight months of war, so they have no training or their from Wagner Group, meaning they have no training. Ukrainians are still consolidating gains in the south. See, the Russians retreated very fast from these areas to make a new defensive line. The problem for the Ukrainians is they have not been able to advance as fast as the Russians pulled out, so Ukrainians have their hands full just advancing through non-occupied areas, clearing the fields and woods of any Russian deserters. This all takes time. And we have videos coming of Ukrainians getting ready to push even further, but every push takes preparation. That is what is happening now. 
now here. I still think Ukrainians might try to cut the Russian contingent on the right side of the Dnepr in half. This video looks like Hollywood, but it's not. It's a tactic Ukraine used to liberate the Kharkiv front, to liberate Liman, and that they are using now in the right bank of the Dnepr. This tactic is so bold, the United States would advise against it. This video comes from the Kherson region, and they're doing the same thing they did in the Kharkiv front. They pack a bunch of infantry fighting vehicles, Humvees, M113s, BTRs, whatever they have with troops drive full throttle as close to the Russian positions as they can, guns blazing, dismount and push in with shock and awe. The strategy is very high risk and very high reward. Against the stronger enemy it would result in a lot of lost vehicles and a lot of casualties, but against Russians it is perfect. This tactic requires three things. Very high morale, bravery and infantry fighting vehicles. A lot of them. A lot of armor. Thanks to the Russian donations from the Izium front, Ukraine now has a lot of armor. In this video we can see Ukrainians preparing to advance in the Kherson Oblast. We can see there is no shortage of armor anymore, thanks to Russia. There is still something weird about it, seeing modern Russian captured tanks in the same video with United States camouflaged infantry fighting vehicles. More Morale is very high as we can see. I don't see the Ukrainians stopping until they hit the sea. Hey, it's manifest destiny. United States has recently sent Ukraine new HIMARS munitions, which have already been spotted on the battlefield. The current munitions that the Ukraine has, the M31 has a 90 kilogram explosive charge. Sorry about the kilograms, Americans. It is not ideal against targets spread across a, a wide area, as the deadly chunks are not designed to fly far. Unlike the new munitions M30A1, which is designed to blast almost 200,000 tungsten balls across a huge area of land, causing damage to soft targets, which are troops and vehicles, uh, lightly armored vehicles. These munitions are sent now that Russia is low on armor and therefore vulnerable to such a weapon. After the liberation of Lyubvimka in the Kherson region, the Ukrainian army began checking the abandoned positions of the second army in in the world. And you know how Russians are depicted as orcs or pigs. We're in this situation, they're closer to the pigs because this is a pig farm. We are also have these in Estonia, Kolkhoz, Sovkhoz building, whatever you want to call these. These boxes are meant for pigs, but they were very comfy for the Russian troops. Homely almost, cozy. They're used to stuff like that. Don't know what else to add here. Oh, and we cannot forget the washing machines. I mean, if you're sleeping with pigs, you kind of get dirty. You gotta wash your clothes and they stole some washing machines and put them in the pig farm. Three days ago, Putin made a speech again to the Russian people. And in this speech, after seven months of accusing Ukrainians in Nazism, Satanism, genocide, after stating that Ukraine does not have a language or a culture, now Putin suddenly says that he always has had an enormous respect for the Ukrainian language and culture and people. Where does this come from? This makes me feel like Putin is not sane from the head. Obviously Ukraine has their own language and culture. Slava Ukraini. 7th of October was the 70th birthday of the Russian president Vladimir Putin. And by his 17th birthday he hoped to have annexed all of Ukraine and added Belarus into the Russian Federation, putting a start to the new Russian Empire. Instead of that, he now has more enemies than ever. He's hated all over the globe. From the start of the special military operation, Ukraine has captured 440 Russian tanks and 650 infantry fighting vehicles. This is enough for a whole army. Ukraine has more armor, more tanks and infantry fighting vehicles than what they started with. <laughs> Partly thanks to the Western powers, but mostly thanks to Russia. Russia takes the lead in donating armor, infantry fighting vehicles and tanks to Ukraine now. This is the deputy head of the Russian Kherson city administration, Stremousov. He said that the noble thing that Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu can do at this point is to commit suicide. This shows that Russians are looking for someone to blame. Russian people in Russia know about the military failures on the battlefield thanks to the captured Russians calling home, Ukrainians allow them to call home, and thanks to Russian military bloggers who actually blast all of the information to the public.
These very same military bloggers are looking for someone to blame, as does the Russian army. This is the situation. Russian military officers who have gone through years of training and schooling to get to the positions they are at, they have been trained some for decades. They are undermined by two people. Vladimir Putin, who now personally commands the Russian army, has no military experience, no training, no schooling in the matter. And the defense minister Sergei Shoigu, who didn't even complete conscription. The officer corps of the Russian army is very angry and they are pointing fingers already. I mean, let's remember that Hitler personally took over the leading of the German army after some defeats in the Eastern Front, leading to even more defeats, because he didn't know what he was doing. Putin is known to be a control freak. Officers are complaining that Putin takes in charge in leading a road sized unit. A road is a platoon sized unit in the Russian army. And the very leader of the country micromanages the movement of platoons in the battlefield. This cannot be good. This activity sidelines the officers and their knowledge and experience and directly insults them. And since Putin doesn't really know what he's doing on the battlefield, it leads to unnecessary losses. Thank you my friends for watching, thank you for staying with me. If you like what I do, then the Patreon link and knock em out cold merch and, and the shirt in the description below. Until my next video, Slava Ukraine!